All right, so today I'm gonna to do a little early season ultrasound on some of my ball python females. And if you're wondering what I use the ultrasound for, essentially I'll look inside of the snake to look at the immature eggs developing as I'm going into the breeding season. And sometimes it can kind of trick you a little bit. Sometimes you get halfway into the breeding season and some of the females will actually reabsorb those eggs. As a matter of fact, last year I had two snakes that I thought for sure were gonna lay, doing pretty good halfway through the season. They didn't lay eggs and then after the season was over, I did another ultrasound and those, those immature eggs were completely absorbed and gone. So sometimes you can be a little bit deceived, but I'd say most of the times if you see eggs developing and they get past a certain size, usually it's a pretty safe bet that that snake is actually gonna lay eggs. As a matter of fact, you get later on in the, in the ball python breeding season, you can actually take the ultrasound and see how many eggs that snake is gonna lay. And the interesting thing too is when you're going into the, the breeding season, you can actually see a whole bunch of really small immature follicles, the, essentially the immature eggs. And those follicles, there's a whole bunch of them to start with. And the more you pair them up with the male, the more those follicles actually get fertilized. So that's, that's another reason you want to keep pairing up your males with your females to make sure as many follicles as possible are fertilized. And then you pretty much maximize egg production if you do it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just pull some of my really interesting projects. I have a clown female I want to take a look at and I also have a pastel spider desert ghost female. I definitely want to take a look at those two. Maybe a couple more snakes and we'll take a look and see how the follicles are doing. All right, so this is my little ultrasound. I actually bought it on eBay about five years ago when I first started in ball pythons. You can actually get them over on Amazon. They're about $1,000 brand new, which isn't too bad for an ultrasound. I've actually seen some really expensive, really bulky. And essentially what it is, it's just like a really small laptop. And then in the back, the probe connects. And essentially what you really need is if you're doing this on ball pythons, you need the flat probe instead of the convex probe. So they have different types of probes for different applications. If you're looking at eggs inside of snakes, you definitely need the flat probe. And the other thing is, is you also need transmission gel. And this is what I use, like a Spectra 360. Actually, I'm wondering how far I can get today with just a little bit of gel. I usually go pretty heavy on the gel. There's not a whole bunch in here. I actually just ordered five more bottles. So as soon as those get here, we'll actually have more. So I'll get as far as I can with the gel and it doesn't really work without the gel. So essentially uh, I kind of want to show you how to read this. The hardest thing is the interpretation and actually how to read it. And essentially right here is where you see the the ultrasound image and you can see if I actually put my finger over it there is no image change at all and you really need the gel on top of this probe or it doesn't work at all. <laughs> there's, there's no contact at all without the gel. It's weird that you actually need that for it to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a ball python. And what I like to do is uh, when I first started with this, I used to pull out the ball python and try to do it on the table. But the problem is the snake kind of takes off and then you're chasing the snake. And I found it's easier to pull the whole tub out, put the tub right next to the ultrasound with the snake still kind of coiled up in the tub and then do the ultrasound right on the snake. So what I'm going to do actually before we start, I'm going to put a little bit of this gel right on the probe. Just You can actually see the, the image change when I put the with the gel on it here and I usually like to go pretty heavy on this gel so we'll see uh, actually how far we can get I usually like to put it about that thick as far as the gel on the probe and then you can definitely see the image change when I put the gel on so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the snake and then some paper towels too you definitely need some paper towels at the end and we'll start doing some ultrasounding all right, so I'm gonna start with this girl, and I actually, she kind of messed up her tub, so I moved her, and I spot cleaned, and I moved her back, and that's not really a good thing, because now she could probably take off and start running, and that is always the challenge. And essentially what you wanna do is you wanna do an ultrasound about a third of the way up from the end of the tail. So you can figure like maybe right in, I'd say right in about this spot right here. So what I really need to do is get her to the point where that spot on her is pretty straight. It's, it's always hard if the, if the snake kind of has a curve in them at that spot. 
and you kind of want to straighten them out a little bit, I'd say maybe right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do this real quick and see if I can see right there. Perfect. So those are the follicles right there, those little black things. I'm just going to freeze them right there. Those two little beads right there, if you can actually see on the screen. And they usually are like a little string of black beads on the snake. And you can kind of get an idea of how big those are. I'd say those are probably six or seven millimeters. And uh, I want to do a quick measurement here before we actually go through and uh, see if we can do this again. So what I want to do is I want to hit set, go up to distance, and I'll hit set again. And then I can come over here and actually measure this follicle right here. And after we measure this, we'll go, kind of go back in and then uh, you can do it you know, from top to bottom and then left to right and it'll give you actually averages. So that is actually not an average of 9.4. So it's 10.6 by 8.2 as far as uh, the distance, the, the size of those follicles. And see, let's see if, we can kind of, if I can kind of show you a little bit more if the snake will stand still. I kind of want to show you a little bit more of the, um, oh, I kind of got to get them by the head so they don't run. <laughs> Just kind of stop them. So I really wanted to show you kind of how to see the little line of follicles and kind of how to interpret what you're looking at here. And the hard part is, is if you move the probe one way or another, they pretty much appear and then disappear. That is always the hard part. And see, it's kind of at a weird angle right now. You pretty much have to straighten the snake out and then do it like this. And you can do it on one side or the other usually works pretty good. So let's see here. I can actually show you. You can actually see. So I'm pretty much right up along the spine. I start pretty much at the spine and then kind of roll it right off of the spine to actually see the follicles and you can see right there that is a little follicle and then here's one and then here's one you can see they kind of disappear if I don't get the angle just right if I don't stay right up by the spine and it's really I'd say it's really difficult to actually you can actually see the ribs and the backbone and everything in there and just all the other stuff that's in the snake and you really have to get it just right so right right there it's usually those the line of black those are the follicles the immature eggs right in there and you have to get them just right to actually to be able to see them and sometimes it's really difficult I'd say it's a little bit easier once they start getting bigger you can see them definitely right there you can see bam 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 those little three four eggs right there all in a row those are the follicles all right so in between doing ultrasounds you really have to wipe off the probe with a paper towel and then put new gel on it just so you keep things nice and fresh and on this snake, this is actually my lesser clown female. I was actually just pairing it up with my, uh, it's an Enchi banana clown male. So take a look at this one. This is actually the male. I just paired them up just yesterday. Doesn't look like they're really <laughs> getting it on in there. So I kind of peeked in there and they're not together. So I thought, man, I'll just kind of sneak a quick ultrasound on this female. So essentially what you need to do is you need to figure out about a third of the snake, which is probably right about here and let's see if I can actually do this without moving the snake too much I still have this on freeze so I want to unfreeze it and let's take a look at this here so in this one it looks like that dark spot could be a follicle right there this one is definitely <laughs> easier let me see if I can move some of this gel over a little bit Usually I find a lot of times these are dark spots if you can get them just right. And you can see that the, the, the problem is, is if the snake is kind of curled around the dish like it is right there, it almost makes, uh, it makes it difficult because you can't have the probe flat up against the snake. <laughs> and let me tell you, this can be a challenge, especially if the snake is starting to move a little bit. And, uh, I could definitely see some follicles in there, but now she's running. Now I have two snakes, and this snake is not in the right position. Let's see if I can kind of do this here. All right, so those right there are the follicles. You can definitely see like that one right there. So that 
those that black spot right there that's uh let me see if i can get a better angle so and the, and the size kind of changes depending on the angle of your probe if you get the angle just right you can actually get it really good and the, the funny thing is on this probe the left is right and the right is left now the snake is moving which i don't want to see <laughs> here we go here we go all right right there <laughs> did i get it no oh, oh i hit the wrong button freeze all right so that is pretty good so this black spot right here is the follicle. That's what I'm used to seeing is the black spots. And sometimes if the snake is a little bit heavier, sometimes they get a little bit faded out and they're not quite as black. But if we take a look at this one and kind of see what the size is on this one, if I can hit the right buttons this time and keep the snakes in the tub and move this over to... So basically you go from one side to another and then back the other way and sometimes it's it's a little bit longer or it's kind of an oblong shape on some of these follicles it's probably easier if i put the snake back than <laughs> the snake running out of the tub here all right so that one is actually 12.9 millimeters and usually once they get to like i'd say maybe 45 millimeters they're pretty much i can guarantee they're going to go at 45 they're really close to laying as a matter of fact when the eggs get really mature they almost fill the entire screen and you won't even see the edges of the egg they'll get so big that you have to move between the eggs and you'll see like two big round circles with just the middle between them that's how big they get on the screen here all right, so I'm going to try this pastel pinstripe for my last snake here and see if we can get a good measurement and see if we can see some follicles. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it right here if <laughs> the snake doesn't freak out. And we'll take a look right there. You can definitely see right away you can see some follicles. And the funny thing is, is if you don't have the right angle, you can't really see it. So right here is an egg and an egg and an egg. And you can kind of see they're all in like a little string right here. It's funny how they all kind of get strung together like that. So what you really want to do is you want to move the pro back and forth until you can see the, the biggest spot possible and then you want to hit freeze and that's essentially the way you want to do it. And then you can come over here and measure these. I'll go over to general and hit set, hit the distance and we'll come over here and measure this. This one looks maybe 10 millimeters. I'd say it's not very big, pretty much at the very beginning of the breeding season. And the bigger the eggs get, the, it seems like the more transparent they get, the big eggs aren't quite as dark as this. So this one's coming in at 10.9 millimeters. You can kind of see on the screen there, right here, these are the eggs right here, here, and here, pretty much in a little string right down the screen there. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Otar Sepper asks, do scaleless ball pythons shed the same way as snakes with scales? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, when the scaleless ball python first came out, that was probably the number one most asked questions on all the forums. Do scaleless ball pythons still shed their skin? As a matter of fact, they do shed their skin just like a snake with scales. It's kind of interesting. I've never actually produced a scaleless ball python yet. I have scaleless heads. I'm working towards producing my first one. But as far as what I've seen on the internet, everyone that has the scaleless ball pythons, they pretty much all shed just the same way as a snake with scales. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.